first of all, what do you expect out of BYU, a team that obviously the metrics love, took care of you at their place, and obviously is really hungry to close the season strong? Yeah, no, they're a really good team. Um, certainly a unique, a unique team with the way they shoot the basketball, as many threes as they take, um, playing the five man a lot on the perimeter. Um, so we expect them to come in here and be highly competitive. <coughs> we expect them uh, to be hungry for a win. They've been playing great lately. Um, just got a win last week, you know, at, at Fall Gallon, which is a hard place to play. So I'm, I'm sure they will uh, be coming in here with a, a mindset that, you know, they, they really want to get the W. You mentioned the volume of threes that they shoot. How do you balance what you guys do, which can give up a high amount of threes, versus that's what they're aiming for and happy to, to oblige you on to shoot those? Yeah, there's, it's our ability to dictate what those attempts are, which I think the first part of that is getting back in transition, getting set, and making sure that we lock in a closeout. We pressure the basketball. Um, you know, as much as we try to keep the ball out of the paint, what's going to be a result of that at times is more attempts from three or a certain amount of attempts. So for us, if it's the attempts are coming because they're not able to push it in transition, they're not able to get in the paint early, they're not able to get offensive rebound kickout threes, but it's more dictated by our ability to guard the basketball, keep the ball in front of us, and then force them to shoot a, a three later in the clock that's contested. Obviously, that's the scenario that, that we're good with, where we're dictating the shot as opposed to them dic dictating. There was laughs in here a couple weeks ago when we talked about Rob needing the break. But he's shown a couple of things, I think, in the last even few weeks that we maybe hadn't seen from him as we get to senior night on Wednesday. What's it say about him and maybe some of your other guys that they're still developing and showing new things here even at this late hour of their career? Yeah, I mean, with Rob specifically, <laughs> sorry, <coughs> with Rob specifically, um, you know, he continues and he has over the three years to to take positive steps forward. I, you know, it's a credit to obviously his work, his mental toughness, the Coach Green, the work they put in every single day. But um, I think more so than anything, it's his confidence continuing to develop, the pride he has. I think all those things factor in how much he wants to win. And it just it allows you to mentally take yourself to a place where you're able to do things at the, at the top of your ability level or to keep you know, pushing forward for that. So um, you know, Rob's, he'll go down as one of my all-time favorites. I mean, in terms of the time that we've had together, where we started at, where we've gotten to today, both individually, he and I, with our relationship and collectively with our team. So uh, it says a lot about Rob that he continues to do that. And, and again, for our other guys, um, you know, he sets a great example that, you know, we, we build our program on the development every single day. We talk about doing the hard work. So you continue to do that and be immersed with that. You'll continue to improve even during the season. You talked about how special your relationship with Rob is there, said he is one of your favorites. Um, can you kind of explain your guys' relationship just a little bit further, how you guys got through some of the tough moments um, from the recruiting process and even to you know, senior day on Wednesday? Yeah, I'd say overall it starts, you know, even like in the recruiting process when somebody has a belief in you to come and, and you don't really have a whole lot to offer them outside of hope, you know, hope that we're going to get this going in a certain way, hope that everything will go the way that we believe it can go. And so he trusted us in that moment before there was – you know, evidence or concrete things that you can say, hey, this is what our program will be about, will look like in, in our process every day. So that's the start of it. I think, you know, in the first season, you know, we didn't have as much depth. Um, we were counting on guys maybe at times where um, they were put in a really tough spot. I mean, Rob coming in from the Summit League, I think, you know, he was probably the biggest, most physical guy in the league. And now you come into a league where there's other guys uh, that challenge you in that same way. So I think you, you go through some early adversities and, and, and questioning things and not sure. I think Rob is somebody that as much as his on-the-court development is on the court, off-the-court development has been great. He's realized you know, the choices you have to make every single day to be able to compete at the highest level and to be at your best. And, and that involves a high level of discipline off the court. And I think that's something that he's continued to evolve with and, and develop. Uh, to the point where this year, you know, you look at him every single day and he looks, you know, if somebody looked at him and said, man, watch him practice. That's what this program's about. I'd take a great sense of pride in him on the court, him off the court, how he carries himself. So there's been a lot of 
time we've spent together, invested in one another. There's been a lot of communication. The relationship has grown, and I trust him with everything. And so it, it starts with, you know, the, believe in the vision. It goes through adversity, through ups and downs, through, you know, losses, three losses in a row, four losses in a row at times in league play over the last few years. And now you get to a point where, you know, you just have that belief in one another, and it's a really cool thing. You talked about, um, you know, he's kind of what you want people to see your program be about in practice. How much did he help you build the identity, the culture of everything that you want your program to be together? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly the only guy who's been here for, for all three, you know, from start to finish all three years, so he deserves a lot of credit for that. He deserves <coughs> a lot of credit for, you know, the practice habits every day. There's nobody that embodies blue collar work ethic, doing the physical things, the toughness things, the effort based things like Rob. So um, he deserves a lot of credit for what we've been able to accomplish. He deserves a lot of credit for how our guys carry themselves and, and the belief that they have. So really proud of him for the mindset he's cultivated and how his essentially his body has followed the mindset that he's had in his time here. Then one more for me, sorry. Um, you guys, I think dating back to the Houston game, your offensive efficiency has dipped to around like 200. You've played some really good defensive teams there, right? Like Houston, UCF. Is there something that you guys have maybe struggled with that you've identified on film that you're trying to improve upon? Or what have you kind of seen in that stretch of play? Yeah, I mean, I, I think ultimately, it, when you look at our offense, um, when we're getting live ball turnovers, that's when our offense has been good. and. Didn't get as many of those in some of these recent games against Central Florida. We're fortunate to have a few more. Um, but I think I'd look at it more from a defensive standpoint of us generating live ball turnovers, creating advantage situations. Um, that's an important part of our offense. Um, again, I'm, I'm probably like the last analytic guy on earth, right, like that values analytics. It's not that they don't tell a story. It's not they're not important. Uh, we just do everything mentality-based, right? And so I think if you look at some of these games and you say the Oklahoma game or the Central Florida game, you know, the offensive dip is also a credit to our defense getting stops, maybe not as many live ball turnovers against Oklahoma or West Virginia or some of these others. So I, I think that's where we got to get back to making sure we're getting those advantage situation opportunities. As I think for anybody, you know, for us or any team, when you're playing against someone's half court set defense this time of the year, I don't think that's good for anyone, you know, regardless of how good your team is. So you got to score in transition, you got to score on offensive glass. And everybody knows personnel so well this time of the year. Everybody knows what decisions to make, how to guard your action. So it just becomes, you know, finding those ways to to get those extra opportunities in transition or on the glass. In addition to Rob, obviously your other two bigs that are going to go through senior night, um, Trey and Hassan, kind of embody, I feel, the adversity, the approach to adversity that you want this program to be about. You know, Trey adding weight longer than he wanted to, Hassan still battling through injuries. But you can reflect on those guys as well and what they've meant and, and, and how hard it will be to replace that trio. Yeah, I mean, for Trey, as you said, like, you know, coming in here, not knowing what when he would be able to be eligible and how that will go uh, is, is certainly a challenge. And then when you look at it, and <coughs> last year he had to come in mid-year, uh, really hard to do. You know, I'd never, I've never been a part of that in whatever it's been, 17, 18 years. I've never been part of having a guy having to integrate midway through. So that's really a tough challenge and something he handled as well as anybody could have. Um, and then I think as the season wore on, you know, he started to feel more comfortable in what he could do for us, what he was bringing to the table. Uh, you know, he's starting at the end of the year last year uh, and then took a huge role leadership wise this offseason. He's been one of our best, if not at the top, in terms of getting our guys together. Um, you know, he's involved in, in a lot of committees. There's a lot of times on campus he represents our program, our department. Uh, he's just got a lot of great leadership qualities. So, really proud of. You know, how he's handled adversity, how he's gotten through it. As you mentioned, you know, we we look at it more like we know adversity is going to come and, and we want to be prepared when it does to be at our best and not have it deter what we're doing. And Trey certainly embodies those traits and, and has done a great job with it. And so he's had some huge games and moments, as, especially in the second half of league play. I'm going to continue to challenge him to be the best rebounder in the league because I still know that that's something that 
even though the numbers are going to be tough at this point to, to lead the league in rebounding, I still think it's something that I'd love for Trey King at the end of uh, whenever our season concludes to be saying he was playing his best basketball. And for him to be playing his best, it's going to be 10 rebounds, 11 rebounds, 12 rebounds, you know, some of those big rebounding games. Uh, for Hassan, you know, similar to other twos came, other two guys came in with adversity. We were not able to get him here right at the start of summer school uh, because of a passport issue we had. So he missed the entire first summer, which it put him in a tough position because, you know, his, his body and the time that he had been home, he, he had lost some weight. And, you know, then you come into a new program and you're trying to learn a whole new system and everybody else had the eight weeks in the summer. And so you feel a little bit like an outsider. You feel behind. You feel like, man, this is – I have a mountain to climb up my weight gain and learn the system and carve out a niche. And so even there was times last year with Hassan where I'm sure he felt like, you know what, uh, these guys recruited me here, but I don't feel like I'm getting the opportunities that, that I need to get to, to show what I can do or to develop. And it wasn't necessarily a reflection on him as much of the fact that we had Oshun and Rob as well. And those guys were doing positive things. But what you saw with Hassan is you saw the flashes at different times during the year. And then down the stretch, you know, we get the two Baylor wins late. He's highly impactful in those wins. He's blocking shots, finishing plays, generating turnovers, uh, doing some great things. So when we had our sit down after the season, um, I really thought it could go either way. Like he may say, I'm looking for a different opportunity. Um, but my challenge for him is if you want to be here, we really want you here and we believe you can take a big step. But it's going to start with you dedicating yourself even more to all these things and doing it right now and getting ahead, making up for lost time. And so, man, he changed his body. Uh, his skill level and being able to facilitate offense for us uh, is huge. His ability to knock down the that short floater runner that he's got in his repertoire um, didn't know that we were going to work on, you know, dunking his own missed free throws. Uh, that was something that he added on his own. But, you know, he's really worked. Uh, he's really dedicated. It was unfortunate that he had to have the injury and the setback because he was playing at such a high level. But we saw him stay committed through adversity and bounced right back uh, when he was cleared to play. And I, again, you talk about development and guys being youthful in their game. I, I still think there's going to be things we see from Hassan this season that maybe we hadn't seen yet, whether it's a game, whether it's plays, whether it's shots, whether it's blocks. I don't know what it'll be, but I still think there's things that Hassan Ward is going to do this season that we're all going to say, OK, like that was his best at the end. We saw him, what he was really capable of. So I'm excited to, to see what that looks like. For your offense, specifically in the half court, how much of it can be attributed to that? Maybe your three best, most important offensive players, Damon, Keyshawn and Milan haven't been playing or really shooting it as well as they had previously. And does that is that a red flag or a silver lining in that presumably those guys will probably figure it out? Yeah, um, you know, they keep doing the hard work. So I'll always believe that if you stay in the gym and you stay working, that things come around for you. So um, even when you look at, you know, some of the percentages, what Tama was shooting from three early and what he is now, you know, things kind of tend to end up you know, at, at a certain point, you know, and, and even for Milan, what he was shooting early uh, from the three. And so, uh, and then you look at a guy like Kurt, where it's going the other way, right, is shooting at the start. So I think it kind of comes back to where, where reality would be or, or where things would be. Um, I look at it and say, you know, game in and game out, we're not a team that is heavily reliant on making threes necessarily to win which I think is a positive, especially in this time of the year, because you have to find ways to win different ways. And yet at the same time, I'm mindful enough to knowing that shooting the basketball well allows for more margin in other areas if everything's not perfect, um, that you know, making a certain amount of those shots. So uh, I think silver lining from the, van from the vantage point of I do believe that those guys will make shots as we move forward. And yet I think, um, important that we just continue to find ways to win games however we need to. And we've had different guys step up. I mean, even you look at the last three games, you know, I felt like Jackson against West Virginia, you know, certainly Demarion in the game against Oklahoma. And then, you know, last game with TK, you know, so uh, I just think everybody's got to be ready. And, and when the opportunity comes, be ready to, to knock it down. What's 
a chance at an undefeated season in this building mean for this team and I guess your program at large? I mean, right now, and, and I know it's, you know, I'd be happy to answer that question probably better if we do the job that we're hoping to do on Wednesday. You know, we're focused on all the details that we need to be our best on Wednesday, and we're focused on great practice today, great film session, and doing all those things. And so uh, I'm going to just stay in that space. We're going to stay in that space of being really focused on being intentional, what we need to do to be successful on Wednesday. Uh, if we're fortunate enough to do that job, I'd be happy to answer that question more directly at that point.